Hi, how you doing? It's Ace here. Today I am in Metropolis Studios in London and it is going to be about miking up a great rock guitar sound. I mean this basically goes for all guitar sounds really if you're talking about live amps. Could be indie, could be punk, could be anything. So we're going to start off looking at the Marshall here. I have my Marshall in today so basically when I get into the studio what I do is first of all I get my guitar and I set up the sound okay so I have my sound set up that I like okay so you need to get your kind of sound first that's the most important thing because the tone is very important so plug your guitar in plug it into the amp and get the sound you want okay not just flat with all your EQs on and see what sounds good in the room. I tend to find that with a Marshall uh, the way they're kind of built, I've been using them for years, I will have um, about, well, about a third of the presence in there, usually full on bass because they're not very bassy amps, the old ones. I've got about two thirds middle on there, so six on the middle. Treble, I've got it on number three. I back it off a bit for recording so it's not too bright. Okay, and then today I'm actually using the enhance. The gain is up full because I want more of a rock tone for myself. So, okay, start off, there's the Marshall, we've set it up with the guitar sound beforehand. Next thing to do is to place the mics in the right place. When you're usually listening to a guitar in the room from an amp and you've got the sound that you like, you're listening to a combination of it coming out the speakers, it being in the room, you being a bit further away. That's the kind of sound you like. So if we were to place the microphone straight into the center of the cone of the speaker, it's going to be very harsh. That's not really what you hear. If you were to put your ear to the cabinet and you move your ear around, the further you get away from the center cone, you're gonna find the more it sounds likely the same to you, to be a, like a slightly softer sound because we're, we're coming at the bright area, we're working away. So I found the best way is to usually, for a start off point, is to look at the cone in the center and then move the microphone somewhere between the center and the outside, about the middle zone to start off. Um, I'm also gonna use two different mics because I wanna capture two different sounds. The first one is an SM57, which is a classic, cheap, brilliant microphone. It captures the essence, it cap captures the grind and the grit of the guitar sound. It's more top end in it, it can take a lot of sound pressure. So you could turn a Marshall up to full and an SM57 will take that volume of sound, okay? Um, I found that usually a Marshall around about six is about the right setting. It doesn't compress too hard, it's not too loud, but it's loud enough to make the valves work and not be too fizzy, okay? So I've got it set to six on here and I have two mics. So we have the SM57 here, right? Next up here, I will use a condenser mic, okay? So a condenser mic can actually be any condenser mic, really. So I'm not really gonna to be too fussed about that, but the, what the condenser mic does is, it gives it a softer sound, okay? More bottom end, a bit more woolly, I suppose. So when you listen back to it, it won't be exactly the sound you're hearing, but then you blend the two together. We're gonna to show blending as well. But I am gonna position them in the same positions, which is between the cone uh, center of the cone and the outside of the speaker so that we get that sound that we hear in our ears in the room rather than the brightness of the cone that that we uh, would associate with it being just too harsh okay so the next thing to do is we have the microphones here we have the amp all set up we need to see where the cone is in the cabinet and as you can see we can't see it because it's got a grill on it so the next thing to do is to get out a torch or a trusty iPhone Turn off the lights, have a look against the grill here and see the speaker inside and roughly position the microphones. Once we've roughly positioned those microphones there, we will go into the control room and we'll play the guitar and then we'll check. So we're gonna check in the sound that it sounds the same to us in here in this room that we like the sound. So it does come out the speakers through the desk. So it's just gonna go straight through the desk flat. We're not gonna put any EQs on, we're not gonna put any effects on it at all, or compression. So we can just compare it, because if you can get the same sound in this room as you can get coming out the desk, you're on a winner, okay? So I think it's about time that we turn out the lights, we find the cones and do some positioning for sounds. Right, here we are. We are now going to position the first mic, the SM57, the one that can take the high sound pressure. We're gonna position that on the cone. So trusty iPhone in hand or any torch. So if I look through here, um, I can see where the speaker is now. So if I move this, I'm gonna go close miking because I, I want to capture 
uh, you know, everything coming out really direct and not, not much of a room sound. So, okay, the end of my speaker is here. The center of the cone is about there, okay? So let's have a look, so just, uh, okay. So really, that here, isn't it? Let's go, let's go about there, so. Um, about, just check that. I'm sure a lot of professionals would say I'm, I'm rubbish, but I see this seems to work for me. Okay, let's try that. So that's the that's the first one. Okay, let's do the second one now, which is the condenser mic. We'll use the next speaker along. Outside of the cone is there. Center is about there. So I think we'll go back here. Let's try. Um, just a rough guess. It always works. It's, it's fine, you know. Sometimes you may have a little bit of phasing problems, but your engineer can sort that out for you if you're recording in a big place, or you can just switch the phase on your Pro Tools. Okay, so, I'm guessing, right? This is just an approximate guess. Okay, there we go. We have condenser mic on the mid of the cone. Um, we've got the, the dynamic mic on the other end of it. We should really now just go in the other room and uh, see how it sounds. You can afford to have the condenser mic a little bit nearer to the cone just because um, it's a duller sounding mic, okay? Uh, but I've, I also, you have to put a pad in on the condenser mic so that it can take higher sound pressure as well. So remember to do that and don't blow the mic up. Okay, we're in the control room now. We've set the mics up where we want to hear them. We're going to hear them back now through the speakers to see if we've got the same kind of sound that's going on in there. We've got the two different microphones, the brighter one, which is really direct, and we've got the duller one, which is the condenser microphone for the bottom end sound. So let's hear what they both sound like together, first of all. Sounds pretty good, actually, for um, the first attempt. So what we can do now is if we look at the desk, if we, uh, let, let, let's listen to just the, the 57 microphone. So you can hear it's quite bright. It's a bit thinner, okay. Let's listen to the TLM, which is the condenser microphone. Quite dull, isn't it? So if I stick them both together, they should sound something like this. Which is great. We can also adjust the mix of them uh, that if we want. So if I wanted to have uh, a bit less bass, I can bring it in more. Sounds about right to me at the moment. Um, we'll go and check the speakers and the cones now, see if the microphones look good to us as well. If that's working, the next thing for us to do is to play it along with a bit of a backing track so we can see if the tone kind of fits in the right space of the backing track. Right, we've come back in. Um, we've tested it on the desk. It actually sounds very, very good. I'm, I'm quite surprised for the first time um, happening. So it's really good. So basically, if you want to, if you want a bit more top end in your microphone, once you've set it like that, say, say it's sounding a little bit dull, move it inwards. Move them in towards the cone. So these would now move that way, so they go towards the cone. More brightness towards the cone, cone. a bit more bottom end, move it outwards. So away from the cone, the centre of the speaker, okay? So at the moment that sounds pretty good. So we're going to work with this at the moment and we're going to go in the desk and we are going to tweak some levels and blend them now. So we want to get the sound of this in the room. We want that through the desk. So the way we're going to do it next is take the bottom end from there, the top end from there, the grinder, and, and match them so it sounds good. So let's go in the other side and check that out. Okay, here we are then. We've got the sound that we like from the amp and also from the speakers and from the mics. Now we're going to check it out within a track to see whether it actually has the sonic capability to sound good within a track as well. So let's try this one.
sounds pretty good actually, I have to say, so I'm quite happy with that at the moment. You can always put EQs on when you mix, so you can add a bit more top end, middle, you can compress it a bit more, but as long as you've got a good source sound and a good tone that fits into the track, there's a good starting point, so we'll move on from there. Okay, we've got our backing track, sounds good, it's coming out here. Let's see if we can put a bit of a solo on the top of it and see how it sounds. And there you go, miking up a guitar in the studio in one easy lesson. <laughs>